Hey YouTube, welcome to the Pagan Perspective. Today is Wednesday, it's subs week, and this week we are talking about dragons. Hey YouTube, welcome to the Pagan Perspective. This is subs week, I am Sabira Sri, aka Megan, and today we are talking about dragons. Cool! <laughs> so, let's see, the... Onyx Moon Dragonfire wrote, So I was wondering what you guys thought about dragons in the following respects. Real, completely mythological, dragon energy, magic, protection, contacting, and working with dragons. So, a lot of information there. First, I want to say that I actually don't have a ton to say on this topic. <laughs> this is one of those kind of areas in which I don't do a lot of work with. I am not a worker with dragons. I have never been a worker with dragons. It is not my calling. I have a very dear friend, a high priestess, who has worked with dragons from day one. It is all she practically does. I tried to get in touch with her for this video, but unfortunately we had a big renaissance fair and she's out like a light. And if you see flashes of light, or anything, there is a massive, massive thunderstorm going on outside. So if my dog makes noise or you see things, but I am getting my Pagan Perspective video out to you all. I thought it was important. I, I, were, I left for work at 7.45 this morning and I just got home now. It's 8.19 and there's the thunder. <laughs> so. I drove through some crazy weather and I was thinking about this on the way home because I was driving through torrential downpours and I thought to myself, wow, this might be an opportunity where you could contact Dragon Spirit, especially a water dragon, to help you out in this case. And I thought about different ways that we could do that. And I'm going to start with the first part of the question, which is real completely mythological dragons. So when we're thinking about dragons as far as real or mythological, and we're not talking about energy or working with them in a magical way, we're talking about the flesh and blood dragon or the mythological dragons of past, I actually really like to think of the movie Ring of Fire because if there were flesh and blood dragons. I see them more as very similar to what they were in that movie. Now, that doesn't mean I don't believe that there were dragons at some point or that there could still be dragons at some point. I, I don't necessarily believe that they're only mythological. However, I really like the way that that movie presented the concept of dragons in their essential Western Middle Ages heyday. This idea of these massive beasts with wings who breathe fire. I love the way that they presented it. So basically they presented it in this way of explaining how they breathe, how they were able to breathe fire by them secreting with their saliva this super flammable liquid and them breathing out and exhaling basically flame for all intents and purposes um, but a combustible gas. I really like this explanation. I think that as science grows, our technology grows, we're going to be able to learn so much more and figure out so much more and there's going to be many more possibilities that we can't even fathom yet. So I really like that explanation of them. I also liked that they were these hibernating creatures and that in the movie they were actually causing the great extinction of the dinosaurs and things. And I kind of liked that idea and that this was a pattern that kept happening. Life, life would grow and then it would get big enough to support them and then they'd wipe everybody out until there was nothing but ash and they couldn't eat ash and so they would sleep again. I like that idea. I mean not that I want to be ash, but I like the explanation of the idea. Now I don't necessarily believe that that actually happened. I, however, think that all these explanations we have for real versus mythological, I think it's really valuable that we're looking into it and we're seeing how 
these creatures could possibly exist. Because we have these creatures that we have in drawings for thousands of years. The, these creatures have been in our minds, in our mythos. It doesn't start from nothing. There was something there. Something preempted this vision, this idea of what a dragon was. And it represents things. So then we get into the magical side of it and the energy, protection, workings, all of it. I don't use dragon energy. I have never used dragon energy. I have never felt an inclination to use dragon energy. I have, however, been around people who do use dragon energy and I've been involved in rituals that invoke dragon energy for a particular person. I, I do... Um, with a very small group, I have uh, ritual circles where we will get together and individuals can do their own workings within the group. So it allows them to be able to put extra energy, extra power to their workings with the collective while it's still an individual working, if that makes sense. So I've been a part of that. And what I can say from it is it takes a lot of experience. It's really important to build a relationship. You can't just call on dragon energy and expect it to work for you. It can be very chaotic at times, but it can also be something that will be completely over your head. It will be so hard for you to manage and so hard for you to work if you're really new to it and you go into it expecting to be able to just snap your fingers and make it happen. You need to build a relationship with the dragon that you want to work with. You need to try your vision quest, go on meditations, go on astral journeys, work with that dragon that you want to eventually do a working with. Build a relationship first. It's essential. You need to have that relationship. You need to trust the dragon. The dragon needs to trust you. Otherwise, you're not going to get anywhere with it. It's really important. So as far as the protection aspect goes, again, I have always known dragon energy to be something that you really need to have a personal relationship with a dragon in order to take full advantage of the dragon's protection. I, I know that it can be done without having that personal relationship. However, when I've seen it done well, it's always been somebody who has a really close tie with a particular dragon, their dragon. And it has really served them well and has really helped them and they've been able to do some amazing workings with it. So I highly recommend really doing your research. Find out as much as you can. Ask questions. There is nothing, nothing better than firsthand information. Find somebody who has a personal relationship with a dragon in their life, who has worked with dragon energy, who has used it for a long period of time. Highly recommend it. I highly recommend uh, the Temple of Witchcraft. I know a lot of them work with dragon energy there. I highly recommend going on astral journeys and really having those conversations and getting to know the dragon that you want to work with. It's just, it's so important. And in so many ways, it's important to, for any energy that you plan on working with. Elemental energy. You want to work with a water elemental, get to know the water elemental first. It's important. And it will help you and it will strengthen your workings and it will make things go so much easier for you in the long run and you'll get better workings out of it. So that's my personal take. Again, my tradition can be very different than other people's. I, I tend to work very high magic. I tend to work with very specific deities and very specific elements and ancestor work. That's very important to me. I don't tend to do a lot of work with other animal spirits. I do work with snake occasionally because that is my, my totem. And it tends to be something that I find is helpful for me to work into my practice. However, it's not something that I do very frequently. So if that is something that you find a calling to, Research, learn lots about it. Nothing replaces firsthand information from people who have been there. So seek those people out as much as you can and enjoy yourself. So I hear more rumbling and I'm going to attempt to get this up.
and hopefully the power won't go out. <laughs> so uh, I will see you for two weeks in August because we are celebrating um, our fifth anniversary of the Pagan Perspective going into our sixth year. And so the subs will be doing two weeks in August and I'm really looking forward to it and I can't wait. I think it's going to be fabulous. I love doing Pagan Perspective videos. And again, you can also find me on my personal channel at Sabira Stream. So until then, guys, and next video, you will see me in a new location because I have signed the lease and I'm going to be in a new apartment. So I'm going to try and find some fun places to be able to film there. So as always, guys, blessed be.